We greet everyone the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to reading the word of the Lord, I invite those who can to stand up at this moment. And the gospel according to John. Fourth book of the New Testament, chapter 11. John chapter 11, the resurrection of Lazarus, if possible, lower the volume of my volume. John 11. Verse 24. Verse 25 and 26. It's there on the projection. Where the Lord said the following. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Lord, we praise you and we are thankful for you have shown and revealed to us for this service and for the brethren that came to this place. We know that you have pre everything prepared for each one of us, a blessing. Your grace is to be poured out in this place so that your name, only your name, may be glorified. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. In the past, a man called Job. And Job is very well known by his afflictions. He asked a question to God. And God answers in this verse. And the uh, question of Job 14.14 14 was, if man dies, will man go back to life? And Jesus now remembers that question that was asked by the servant Job. And he answers in this way, I'm the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And the Bible says, my brethren, that on the town called Bethany, there was a home, a family that was composed, the Bible describes, of three people. Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Martha, she called Jesus to go to her house. And Jesus received the invitation from Martha and went to the house of Martha and met there with Mary. And the word says that Martha received Jesus at the door of her house and Jesus entered. But she was very tired and concerned with all many things. The Bible says that Mary who was the one that had anointed Jesus with a, a vessel of oil the one who had dried up Jesus' feet with her, the hair of her head. She sat down at Jesus' feet and her sister Martha went to Jesus to complain about that. And Jesus then told Martha, Martha, you are, you are tired and overloaded with so many things, but there is only one thing that is necessary. And Mary, your sister, she chose the good part, which is not going to be taken away from her. So my brethren, can, what can we learn from this? What is the good part? The good part is to be at the feet of Jesus. And Mary, she had dried up, as I said, Jesus' feet with the hair of her head. And why did she do this? 
The hair speaks. The hair and the head speaks of government. The hair speaks of thoughts. And then she began. She put uh, rode her hair against Jesus' feet. And what does that mean? Help me out. <laughs> what does that mean? So it means that from that moment forward, who was going to govern and who was going to guide and would to going to give direction to her life was Christ. When she anointed Jesus, she gave her life to Jesus. I come, Jesus, to offer my life. And from that moment forward, as we say, like in the cover of, of our songbook, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. What I was once, I am no longer am. But how about Lazarus? Who Lazarus was? The name Lazarus is originator from Hebrew. Was is derives from Greek. Was a mix, and it means the one who the Lord helps, or the one whom the Lord gives assistance or, or helps. And Psalm 21, it says, I rise my eyes towards the mountains. And the following verse, verse 2, says, where my help will come from. And the other verse says, my help, my help comes from, from the Lord. What Lord? The one who made heavens and earth. But on Psalm 124, verse 8, it is different. I no longer, it doesn't, no longer speaks about my help or your help. It speaks now about our, our help. Our help comes from, from the Lord who made the heavens and earth. So it is wants to show us, to us, to each one of us, that God came to help everyone because the love of God it goes over everyone the mercy of God falls upon everyone the Lord loved the world so much that he sent his son so that whoever believes in him not die and sometimes we are worried about death but we may have eternal life blessed be the name of the Lord so Lazarus is you and I who needs the help of the Lord needs helps assistance of God, needs the grace of God, and needs the mercy of God. And the Bible says, my brethren, that Martha and Mary, they called Jesus. Why did, did they ask to call Jesus? It was, it was because Lazarus was sick, he was ill. It is another teaching for you and for me here. For each one of us here, is there someone sick in your house? Is there someone needs help or assistance? Ask to call Jesus. The Bible says, my brethren, that in that conversation, in that request, the condition of that man was explained. She, uh, they, uh, they asked to call Jesus. And they asked to, to tell Jesus that the one whom you love is sick. So then we can say, speak about prayer. It was actually a prayer that was made. So look, Lazarus, the one whom you love, is ill. Tell Jesus where your pain is. What is your pain? What is your necessity? They asked to call Jesus, and they said, Jesus, I asked to call you because the situation is this. This is the problem. And I know that only you can resolve it. And they said, and they also said, the one whom you love. Sometimes you might think, well, there are three people in, your, in the house. 
Do you think that Jesus only loves Lazarus? No. They said, the one whom you love. But later, it says the following. Look, Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He loved everyone in that household. Their whole family. was They were all loved by the Lord. But then, my brethren, Lazarus was sick. He was ill. And then Lazarus dies. And then Jesus says that Lazarus, when he com Jesus comes to the disciples, he says, uh, I'm going to the seat of Bethany, to the house of Martha and Mary, because our friend Lazarus is dead. And then you and I might think, look, Jesus loves Lazarus. He loves Mary. He loves Mar Martha. Lazarus is Jesus' friend, and he died. Jesus has a conversation with the disciples and says the following. Let me remember here. <laughs> he speaks with the disciples and says the following. In the world, be at peace. In the world, you will have affliction. But be of good cheer, or in other words, have faith. And it says something interesting. I was defeated the world. I was victorious against the world. So if you are a friend of Jesus, we are a friend of Jesus. We are loved by Jesus. Our house is loved by Jesus. And does this does not make us immune to pain, to the adversities, to the problems. But don't be worried about this. Be at peace. And have faith. You know why? Because Jesus has already overcame all those things for our lives. So then Lazarus dies and Jesus says the following. This death this infirmity is not leading to death. The more the death is not to be glorified in this death, in this infirmity. The one who is going to be glorified in this infirmity, in this death, is going to be my father. It's for the glory of God. So then he calls his group of assistants and says, let's go and make a visit there to the house of Martha and Mary. And then, but a while before, Jesus was almost stoned on Bethany. There was a disciple there that never forgot things. Thomas, the incredulous. And Thomas, the incredulous, he said, what are we going to do there? Are we going to make a visit on the house of Mar Martha and Mary? For what purpose? Lazarus is already dead. We're going to go there also to be killed. So we are not going to make any visit there. He's already there. What are we going to do there? But the Lord said the following. Let's go there because this visit is for the glory of God. So then the Master, my brother and sister, this is for the church. He asked us to make visits. Let us do visits. Maybe you think, oh, we're, not, we're not going to go visit that brother or sister because 
There's no solution for them anymore. Don't worry about it, because God will come up with a solution. The visit will be for the glory and honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So then Jesus went with his disciples to make a visit to his friends. And so when Mary uh, became aware, when actually Martha, when she became aware of the fact that Jesus was going to visit them, the Bible says that she went to meet him. What an amazing thing. Martha had already learned a couple of things. Glory to God for this. Now she was, she was giving the appropriate priority to things. Jesus is coming to visit me. I'm going to meet him on the way. God is coming to my house. I'm going to get out to meet him on the way. And she came before Jesus. And it's interesting that it seemed like everybody knew why Lazarus died. Everybody seemed to be a doctor. Everybody knew the cause of Lazarus, the death of Lazarus. Martha said, if you were here, Jesus, Lazarus would not have died. And then Mary says to Jesus, if you were here, my brother would not have died. So the cause of the death of Lazarus, the absence of Jesus. What, what can we say here? What is death? It's the absence of life. And what is life? It's the absence of death. So if death, and if Jesus comes with life, so then death is transformed into life, or uh, death departs. So the reason for the death of Lazarus was the absence of Jesus. And many times, on brothers and sisters, and you who visit us tonight, we have a problem in our homes. A husband, the wife, the, child, the son, the daughter, the brother, sister, the father-in-law, the mother-in-law. Remember Peter? She had a mother-in-law sick, and he brought Jesus. He, he resolved the problem. The grandfather, the grandmother, and on and on. And sometimes, infirmity is so serious, the illness drags so much, the absence of Jesus prolongs in such a way that the person dies. And that's exactly what happened with Lazarus. They called him, called Jesus when Lazarus was already sick. It is interesting that the two sisters, they realized this. It is important that we realize this as well in our homes, in our families, in our church, in our community, in our city, our country, our workplace. There is a brother and sister. And we can say that we are all brothers and sisters. If you notice the absence of Jesus, call Jesus. Jesus was absent at that moment. He had already been present in the past, but now he was absent. So then life leaves and death enters. So then Jesus, he goes and he meets with that, with Martha. And Martha explains the situation, what happened. And it seems that Jesus had taken too long. Sometimes we pray and things only get worse. We pray and things are getting worse and worse and we begin to be worried. We pray and the situation is getting worse. I was sick, now I'm dead. But Jesus says something interesting. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. Jesus didn't take too long, my sister. Jesus is not taking too long. Jesus arrived on the right time. 
and he says something that is very interesting. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. Think with me. I have a person sick in my house and this person dies. And I had already asked someone to call Jesus. And I know, I know that the invitation I made to Jesus was accepted. And he is going to come to my house. What should I have done? Should I have done? I should have left the body of the dead inside there. He's dead, he's dead, but Jesus is coming. I'm going to leave him here. Because Jesus is coming, I know that Jesus, I believe that Jesus is going to resurrect. I know that Jesus is going to operate. I know that Jesus is going to operate, so I'm not going to leave the body here. Uh, leave the body from here. But the sisters did what human reason told them. But the things of the Lord are not dictated by reason, but by faith. So then the two sisters, they placed, the, they tied his hands and feet, they put a rope around his body, put in him on a tomb, and put a stone at the door of the tomb, and that's it. Sometimes the doctors come to you and say, my brother and sister, or maybe to your relative, there's no solution. He was, uh, he, there's no hope for him, uh, even for the police, sh police or the, by the society, nobody gives worth to that person. This person is worthless. There's no solution. This person is thinking because sin smells bad. The drink smells bad. I already drank. The, the beverage, we, it would uh, perspire through the pores and I had to throw the, the shirt to the garbage. And cigarette smells bad. The drugs smell bad. Every type of vice smells bad. The lie smells bad. The prostitution smells bad. The adultery smells bad. Four days smelling bad. But my brothers and sisters, God does not love sin. It is written in the Bible. But God loves the sinner. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And Jesus said the following, I will resurrect him. My brother, my sister, you who entered here in the house of the Lord, there is a problem that has no solution for. Maybe your a relative, your friend, people are saying that there is no solution. Maybe your son has no solution, or your wife has no solution, and maybe you have no solution. Mary. She received news from the part of her sister, Martha, and said the following, Mary, the Master is, where is the Master? The Master is here, blessed be the name of the Lord, and there's more, he, my brother and sister, he is calling you. Martha and Mary, they asked to call Jesus. Math, Martha went to meet Jesus on the way. And Martha told Mary that Jesus was there. You know how the things of the Lord are? Communication was flowing very well. Things were being proclaimed in the correct way. One was calling the other and everybody was gathering. The Bible says that the church is the body of Christ where two or three are gathered. Here will the Lord be. And she went to the presence of Jesus, now Martha and Mary. And the people around them 
they didn't know exactly what was going on. Jesus went there to console her, them, or if Jesus went there to cry with them. And in fact, nobody expected and nobody believed that Lazarus, a dead, was going to resurrect. Sometimes you don't understand. We are not understanding. And not even Mary was in, and Mar Martha was the word understanding what Jesus went there to do. What is Jesus doing here? He asked a question on that day to Martha and Mary. Where did you place Lazarus? Where do you place Lazarus? That's an interesting question. This is a question from Jesus. What did you do with your marriage, with your home, with your house, with your family, with your child, with your son or daughter, with your father and mother? Where did you place them? Didn't I say that was coming? They presented to Jesus a cave, a tomb, a burial place. And at that moment, the Bible says that Jesus cried. Jesus cried because they placed his brother, his friend, on the cave. They put his friend on the tomb. The friend of Jesus was in the darkness. The son of Jesus was buried. The son of Jesus was all wrapped, wrapped up, all tied up. And Jesus cried. And my brethren, there was a great obstacle for them, and Jesus operated a miracle. Can you help me? What is this obstacle there? Was the stone. And what does this stone mean? Uh, yes, human arguments, but there is something else that defines it clearly. It's hardness of the heart. A little further. Let's go a little further. Human effort. Let's go a little further. Barriers. A stumbling block. Excuses. Let's go. Difficulties. Let's continue. Let's continue. Continue saying what that rock means. What that means. Sin or failures. Let's continue. The great barrier. Death. But there is a word that defines everything. What did Jesus say to Martha and Mary? Yes, exactly. They said, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Thomas. Thomas, he was incredulous. If, why did Jesus say that Thomas was incredulous? Because Jesus said he was incredulous. If, if Jesus says he's incredulous, he was incredulous. If there is someone called Thomas here, I'm sorry, but that's what Jesus said. He just went there and he introduced himself in the midst of his disciples. He had resurrected and Thomas came and said, if I don't see, if I don't touch he, Jesus, I'm not going to believe. And then Jesus, when he presented to Jesus, he was, went there all happy. And Jesus said, why are you incredulous? Be a believer. Isn't it true? Be a believer. Faith is not to seeing, to believing. Faith is to, fa faith is to see, to believe? No. Faith is the opposite. Is to, to believe. Is if you believe, you see the glory of God. 
And now, who is believing here? If you believe that God can resurrect your home, your marriage, your family, your business, your son, your daughter, your nephew, your niece, do you believe? to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Or to God. Hallelujah. Or to God. Glory to God. Jesus said the following. 
Remove the stone. Remove the rock. A while ago, a uh, while before, they, they were trying to stone Jesus. And this morning, we heard a message about forgiveness. And sometimes we are stoned, or people try to stone us. And this causes in us a feeling of bitterness and revolt. And Jesus could have said, uh, if you want to, st they tried to install me once. I'm not going back any there anymore. But Jesus, even in the moment he was being crucified, he said, Lord, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Salvation goes through forgiveness. Thomas didn't want to go there because he had harbor harbored some bitterness in his heart. And my brother, the Bible says that when, when we forgive our neighbor, if we don't forgive our neighbor, the Lord, our Father, is not going to forgive us. So then Jesus, he had no reservation, he was, had nothing against him. There were a couple of people that had something against him, but he had nothing against anybody. So he went to Bethany, he went to the house of the family, he went to the door of the tomb, And then, and I said at the beginning that they asked to call Jesus. Martha and Mary went to meet Jesus. And Martha told Mary that Jesus was there. So now, the one who was going to finish off the, the business was Jesus. Now Jesus was the one who was going to call someone. And Jesus went to the door of the tomb and he called He went to the place where death was. And there, on the place where there death was, on the house of death, Jesus rescued man from death and brought man to life. Many of our family members are like this. They are in the house of death in the house of sickness, in the house of the drugs, and in the house of all the other things that I already mentioned here before. And Jesus goes there on the house of death. Yeah. Oh, the battery went, went down. That's all right. So then Jesus goes there in the house of death and rescues man from death to life. I'm going to tell the experience of uh, an individual that he was in this house of death. And some of the brethren here know this man who was there behind uh, of the band the carnival in the house of death behind of the band singing who is dead when man dies to the world he is alive for Christ but when he is dead for Christ then he thinks he is living that's when he is deceived he is dying and in the house of death God spoke to that individual. He said, Hey, you, get out of this place. And that man, that man was all uh, wrapped up, tied by the hands and feet, and a sheet around his head. He had no identity. He was completely wrapped up. Nobody knew who that individual was, who was stinking. 
And the Lord rescued that man from death and brought him into his presence. And Jesus entered into the door of the tomb and said the following You, who needs God's help, the assistance of God, Lazarus, come out. Come to the light. Come to my into my presence. Come to see the glory of God manifesting in your life, in your home, in your house. And this infirmity is not going to lead to death, my brother and sister. If you're going through a difficult moment in your life with a family member, this month we're praying for our family members, for your family members. Can the word say that it's no solution, that it is over, the person is dead? But Jesus he is alive and is present in this place. And He is calling you. Come out, come to the light. Don't be incredulous. Be a believer. Because I want to manifest my glory, my power, my grace, my favor and my mercy upon your life, upon your home, upon your house. I want to resurrect your faith. And that's what Jesus did that day. He resurrected the faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because whoever comes close to God, it's necessary that, this, that they believe that Jesus exists. And Jesus went there for this, to manifest the glory of God in the life of the people who were there. Amen. And the Lord has shown in a spiritual gift that there was a woman that came to the house of the Lord and her greatest concern was in dying. And this week she dreamed that she was going to depart. And that caused her to be very anxious and worried but the Lord asked to tell this woman, My son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. If, if he, the person dies, he will resurrect them. And if you believe, you are not even going to die. Do you know that? You're going to pass from death to life. And the Lord has shown a woman here that when she left her house, she is in the house of the Lord, but her mind is in her house. Sometimes the house speaks of the family, the home, the family, familial relationship, and house sometimes speaks about our heart, about concerns. But she came to the house of the Lord. Sometimes we are like this, like Martha. Jesus is present. He's in the side of the house, and, but we are worried with many things. But then in the, at this moment, we need to be like Mary. Jesus came, sit at Jesus' feet. First, the kingdom of, of God and all the other things will be added on to you. The God is going to be all place all things in their right place. And the Lord has shown that there were things that were out of order in the house of this woman. And when she came back to her house, God had placed everything in order, and the Lord said, Do not remove move it around. I place your house in order so the light may penetrate in every corner of your house so that you may be blessed. Placing things in order is to place God in the first place in our lives, is to believe in so that the glory of God may shine upon your life and show upon your home and upon your house. And the Lord also shown another couple. This couple was preparing to receive a child. And now we can say, speak here about two situations, a real a physical situation and another is spiritual. The spiritual side, 
is the birth of Jesus Christ, is the presence of Jesus in the life of the couple, which is fundamental, it's very important. And the Bible says that uh, a string of threefold does not break easily. So the marriage has to have three people, not two. It has to have a woman, a man, a woman, and Jesus in the middle. A man, a woman, Jesus in the middle. A man, a woman. Did you understand? A man, a woman, and Jesus in the middle. A man, a woman, and Jesus in the middle. Very, very good. This is the marriage. A man, a woman, and Jesus in the middle. Right to Jesus. Amen. Don't do it in any other way because it's not going to work out. A man, a woman, and Jesus in the middle. Amen. Let us stand up. We we'll praise you, God, and give you honors for your holy name, for everything that you have done in our behalf and our benefit, and that your oh, glory and your power and majesty may shine upon us, upon our home, upon our house, upon our family members, resurrecting, curing, delivering, removing, Lord, the stone of incredulity, so that we may only only your glory may manifest in our midst and we, your name may be glorified, Lord. Bless us as we go home and under your protection we pray in the name, holy name of Jesus and your name is said and for the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father and sweet and eternal consolation of the Holy Spirit be upon the people of God and now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. I want to remind to everyone who are here with us, to visit us, then on the next Sunday, we are not going to have a service, uh, not even a Sunday school or on the service at night. We're going to ha have a service of Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday, 7.30. And on Sunday, the church and the brethren are going to be participating on a seminar in Port St. Lucie. If you are here with us, if you visit us, if you took knowledge of this seminar, you want to participate on this event, uh, there is still room. The doors are open. It will be a pleasure to receive you. It will be a pleasure for the church for you to participate with us of this seminar. You just need to seek the brother Evander Luciano, each of the brethren who are here, to pick up the instructions and do your subscription. And for those who are going to participate, there is an instruction from the Lord. Fasting from 0 to 9, or from 5 until the end of the service. And and one week of early dawns. Since we don't do early dawns services here in our church, so the brother, whatever you are, at 6 o'clock in the, in the morning, do your prayer, your plea, your intercession to God in favor of your participation and of the participation of the brethren in the seminar so that they may protect, deliver them as they travel so that in the seminar we may realize that the, the Lord is there. The Lord will be there, but so that we may be realizing that the Lord is there. And you who are with us, if you need a prayer or a clarification regarding the gifts, what was said, and Remain where you are, raise your hand, that the brothers are going to give you the proper assistance.
like I don't play squads.